Well, to start our video today, there is the last set going. I'm a little tight for time, tiny bit tight for time. So, um, I had enough time to get my boots cleaned up, my helmet cleaned up, and uh, sit here, watch the last set. It's 11.30, it's a two hour drive. I'm gonna get there about 35 or 40 minutes before LD's Patrick, and I know I had a couple of people say, you know, when are we gonna pull the plug on Patrick? And it's a very tough time for me, but he's he's getting very, very close. Him, Macho Martini, there's a maybe three or four horses that we'll probably end up shedding at some point in the near future. Uh, but for now, just fingers crossed for, for Patrick today. I'm just watching the last set. Who does Daryl have? Irresistible son. Oh, wow. Does he ever look good? I'm fancy like, uh, looks like she's just about to inhale everybody. I'm going to turn the camera over here in just a second. You guys can see what I see finishing up the mile. Somebody just made a, uh, Mounds for all made a break. He's never run in his life. Lazy. Yes. Run. Never. Oh, well. Must have caught a boot or something. Anyway, here they are going under the wire. Irresistible sun on the inside. I'm fancy like my God. She's pretty. Uh, really don't care. Gypsy Hill militant and a break from Mounds for All. I don't really know why he made a break. He never runs that horse. He always goes with a nice with a nice uh, low head. We don't even have a head check on him. Never had to wear one on him. He's got him rolling there. Maybe he just got a little doubled up. He's got a beautiful gait too. That's a that's one of our better sets uh, across the board. Now, obviously, we had a we had horses, good horses throughout the day in all our sets, and I'm going to talk about all of them in a minute. Um, there he goes now. Oh, he's really got him rolling. You guys, uh, you can't see from over here. Anyway, uh, that was a good group of trotters there. I'd say they went around 234, 235. Same speed we were going all day long. And yesterday also, you know, uh, James had said to me, you know, we're going to go on 255. And I said, well, no, not right now. I said, you know, we'll go on 235, 240 a couple more times. And that will weed out the ones that maybe are, are saying, you know, I mean, I need a couple of weeks. And, and this is rare because for us... Uh, being at Tomiko every year, whether it be the, the snow melting, the ice melting, or just a hard, firm track, or just the weather in Ontario in general, we've always missed time, right? You will know that we had to take a Saturday off, or we had to take a, you know, we couldn't train this day or that day, or maybe even for a couple of weeks, and that happens every year. And it's not planned, but it has to be recognized that those days were missed. So this day, this year, we're in a place where it's seemingly, if you were ever going to miss a day, it would be yesterday and for him to have that track that good yesterday was beyond surprising beyond surprising that he had the track that good yesterday now uh, both our both our uh, plants both our, our stables in each country are around the same right now they've all been between 230 and 235 what they did to get there or to go from there is a little bit different for each horse some horses did it very easily. Other horses were stressed out a little bit. You saw that after, I saw that after the training mile. They need to be backed up. Some horses looking a little thin and they're gonna get a, maybe a couple of weeks of no training, just jogging and lots of feed, just to let them, you know, physically they could be sprouting up a little bit, going through a growth spurt, but just let them catch up. Now's the time of the year we can shuffle everything around. But when we get to the end of April and into May, I want them all approaching the starting line. And, and uh, that's not gonna happen. Obviously, punch the clock's not gonna be ready to go in June. And nobody has to, has to be ready to go in June, but I would like to see the formation of, of a large group of horses being ready to go. You know, every year we have our Mother's Day open house and, you know, we go anywhere between 2.5 to 2.10. And, um, you know, every year, you know, our horses, it seems like every year, maybe it's because we're, getting deeper pedigrees, I don't know, or maybe just adjusting the way we train them through the middle of the spring. I mean, it's March now, we haven't beat 230. I think that's the first time that's ever happened. So again, we're, we're trying to stay back in that middle, that middle uh, speed range, I guess, for the babies going right now. Most people have been, uh, have been to 30, whereas this time of year, we might've been a little bit quicker and um, a little bit stronger for the entire mile and a half, whereas now we go the first half and maybe 130, 135, and then we'll, uh, we'll go the last mile in that 230 speed. So uh, maybe a little less stress, a little less frequency, and uh, a little, I guess a little more repetition this year is what we were aiming for and what we've executed, I think, quite well throughout the year. So I'm gonna go through everybody. You guys know what went on yesterday. I did a, I did a, uh, a video for you yesterday. 
Uh, quick recap, Winter Bells and Drebin uh, Insider Trading were all fantastic in the first set. Right behind us was uh, Seasons of Love, who made a little miscue. Don't talk about Bruno, who was good. And I, I, I don't know if James's horse made a break or not. He was trotting fine. Um, we only went very slow, maybe 250, 251. And today at Northfield, we went around 237, 242. That last set went a little bit quicker. Uh, but again, all the horses well within themselves. Uh, so the second set in Ontario State, time is on my side, was awesome. Watch Your Mouth was awesome too. Easy in the turns was right behind us. Flash Flashlight made a little break. She's a filly. We're going to give two weeks in the field. Try and put 50, 60 pounds on her. Just let her cool down. Uh, you know, when she goes on the track, she canters a little bit. She's over on one shaft. She's a little peggy. And then she, then she's fine after that. Now, growing pains and growth spurts, which is fine, but you have to take note of those also which we will do george of the jungle was awesome and actually great bet was very very good also and then in the last set punch the clock four of them across the track i was in behind them with uh rito's lady mcpaisley was good hallie in the clouds james arthur and punch the clock all finished in a firing line across and we're all good so great day yesterday we moved on to today i went with antilles hanover and weave through late kind of get out of gear and touch that left foot a little bit and it's a second week so we're gonna have to wear a bell boot on that but he did his work well. I could not get to who was, who was the winner of that set. Uh, Ali Baba was a winner in that set, two thirty-eight, two thirty-nine. Antilles Hanover was second. Uh, Born to Dance, Cheraholo were right there. Did you know was in behind us? She got in a set today, so good for her. Mile and two forty something. Uh, Goldbug Hanover was right there also, and Levesque in action. Everybody stayed at it and did their work really well. Actually, Goldbug made a money break at the wire. We're going to take the flip-flops off Goldbug. She's slapping on her hind chins a little bit. That happens with flip-flops. Um, get the cork off her, get the flip-flops off her, and go to a trotting shoe. I don't think we'll have a problem. Second set, uh, again, just everybody just in a line across the track. Pick pocket, beat all the Pacers and everybody today with Joey. Venice Blue Chip. Uh, actually, hold on. Venice Blue Chip, I think, won the set, actually. Affection and Pickpocket were right there beside her. Arson in behind them. I was on the outside with Cowboy by the Sea. Paycheck Princess was right beside me. Jason had made a break with Victory Blue Chip, but might have bitten off more than he could chew there in the last uh, three-eighths of the mile. Um, with Victory Blue Chip, actually, he said he stumbled, knuckled over, and made a break. So, again, a horse. those horses were all Baycoxed. Uh, middle of the month, we're going to come back and uh, come back with them with uh, EPM medication and blister their stifles. Now, a lot of people saying, does the EPM medication work? Not on every horse. And it's easy to treat with very, with, I want to say, they say no side effects, but there's no such thing. We all, we're all big boys and girls. If you put something in your body, it's, you see a, a positive and a negative reaction uh, almost every time. I think every time. I think that's science, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but certainly no obvious side effects from this. So uh, for the horses knuckling over and looking a little sloppy, is it growth? Is it maturity? Maybe it is a little EPM. So we tend to, at least this time of year, give them a little TD paste. It's called generic Baycox and uh, blister their stifles up a little bit. So victory blue chip due for that to happen. Ready for landing left for Ontario Tay. So he was scratched from today's training. I went with no chance in Hill and they were very good again. Memory and imagination. Um, very, very nice horse. Lovers play look good. Prince Charmer looked good. I went with no chance in Hill. He was awesome. Oh, snap you. The entire set. Activation made a little break coming into the last. Uh, a horse went by us on the dead run. You'll see people running them all the time. And Joey just said he just threw his head and made a break. But trotting great otherwise. The entire third set was great. Fourth set, again, very happy with what I saw from them. I had Sweeney. I couldn't get to... Uh, who was the winner in there? Uh, I was on the outside. Green Tea. Green Tea was the horse I couldn't quite get to. Sedona Hill was very good also. Um, AC Swan stayed at it. South Wind Digit, Purple People Eater. Again, an entire group. But again, we backed them up a little bit. We weren't stretching them right thin today. Around 38 to 40, and they were all very good, the fourth set. So Sedona Hill, Green Tea, AC Swan. Third and six was good also. Sweeney, South Wind Digit, and Purple People Eater. Everybody in there good. Fifth set, Nicola Hanover was in there with Jason. I had a very, very good set with Pull the Shoes today. Very happy with her. She did her work perfectly. Royal Emeralds was good on the left line last turn, though. She might have been looking out a little bit. Um, uh, the other horse was uh, Mel Gibson was very good also today. Um, Sunset Acres Girl won the set. 237, 
She won the set. I was second with Pull the Shoes. Royal Emeralds was in the middle. Nicola Hanover was just behind us. That's Jason's Philly. Um, <clears throat> Mel Gibbs Swan was on the far outside also and looked very, very good. Uh, who am I missing? Nobody. There was a scratch in there. And then the last set you guys saw in your video, Irresistible Sun just look, continues to look impressive. Really don't care. Everybody mounts for all made a break, but I can guarantee you that was an, an anomaly, as I like to say sometimes. He never, ever makes a break. And I think he was just switching gears coming out of the turn and rolled off because I watched him trot through the turn and into the backstretch after. And he looked very good. Irresistible Sun was great. Really don't care. I'm fancy like uh, Militant and Gypsy Hill. That was a good crew there, and they were very good. Now, afterwards, in between, I went with Mo Power Baby, a mile and a half, 220 at the mile marker. She was extremely good also. Very happy with the way she's coming back. Uh, I was really, really happy with her, and also happy with a horse that I, I'm quite fond of, as you guys know, Austral Hanover. Austral Hanover also was exceptionally good. So very, very happy with what I saw today, heading over to go with my boy Patrick, I just, fingers crossed he does something other than race bad or make a break today, because it's, he's coming to an end with us, unfortunately, and uh, come back here, I'm going to qualify, so this is what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get a car wash real quick, five minutes late, but I'll be alright, car wash, off to the meadows, trained all the babies today, and three year olds, Jason went with today, to, yesterday, off to the meadows, go with Patrick, come right back, Go with Sister Solange at 5 o'clock in the qualifier. And then I'm going to race our boy HP Maestro. And then that's it for the day. I'm going to get a bite to eat and head home so I can watch Ollie's speech tomorrow. So that's it for today. That's it for today. I will talk to you all. I'll talk to you later on in the day after we get a look at Sister Solange, uh, HP Maestro, and hopefully LD's Patrick a little better outcome today. So with that, I'll let you go. I will talk to you soon. Take care.